You see me now? All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Bye. Praise God. Praise God. How you doing? I'm Pastor Byrne. I'm coming to you today, this fine day in God with the Bible study. I just want to just thank Pastor Rob and Pastor Andrea for facilitating me and helping me out and helping me to get this thing going, man. I, I'm not really that, that computer savvy. But they're blessing. They're a blessing to be able to, to work it out every week. And I praise God for them. Let's pray, y'all, before we get started today. Let's give God some praise and some honor and some glory. Amen. Father God, we just thank you so much. We thank you that you are able, Lord God, to carry us through season after season. Good, bad, up, down, Lord God. Whatever the season is. You're with us, and we just praise you for that, Lord God, because it's been some crazy seasons these last couple for me, but <clears throat> I just thank you that you're keeping us, you're keeping, Lord, the harvest, you're keeping your people, and that uh, that we are making it through, Lord God, this, this coronavirus, this um, pandemic, um, this situation with our jobs and our family lord god we just we just thank you for taking care of us and being with us in jesus name father god watch over us give us the word today let the word penetrate us and change our heart lord god and let us just talk let us just kick it today and come to some understanding about your word and about things that happen to us uh in jesus name we pray amen all right y'all now <clears throat> today I want to talk a little bit about um, offenses, being offended, being hurt, being wounded. Um, you know, we, we, as Christians, we go through that. We, 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 we have to leave room for being hurt, for being offended, because everybody just doesn't understand us, and we don't understand them to a, to a place to where... Sometimes th things get crossed, messages get crossed, our conversations get crossed. One person is hurt, the other person don't really know that they did it, so the other person is mad, and we go on and go on and go on about it. So I just want to bring to you that, you know, the Lord said offenses, they must come, you know, but, you know, uh, beware of the person that they come through. Um you know, and as, as Christians, we just really have to uh, give each other space and give each other time to grow and to learn and just to understand that everything don't always uh, end up a, 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 a bed of roses. Sometimes, man, it's just us having to understand that people are people and we're just going to have disagreements. Or we're not going to see everything the same. Let me share a little something here. <clears throat> I want to share just some 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 uh, vocabulary words. The first one, and we praise God for Pastor Jan and Pastor Oz. You know, I, I love them, and I just got to give them big ups on on today and that uh they called me and asked me say hey man you want to do it i'm like yeah man i i take it and i i just appreciate god for it because this word that i'm coming forth with it's been in my it's been in my spirit for probably about three months now maybe it could have been a little longer but it's been sitting there and i just when he called you know holy spirit said you already got the word teach on offenses share on offenses so let me let me break down the vocabulary word. The di you know, I looked in the Webster's dictionary and it says <clears throat> to offend is to cause dislike, to anger or vexation or to displease. Now I'm sharing this, I'm sharing this now because 
In a minute, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to share some things with you. And uh, it hit home with me. And the reason why I'm going to share about myself is because I can. it's, it's easier to, to, to share something with you that happened to me between me and God than it is to share what happened with somebody else. This way I can give you, I can give you a time because offense is not easy to get over. If, if somebody said something or did something to you, treated you some kind of way, acted some kind of a way towards you, just know it's, it's not always that easy to get over. So let me, let me, let me give you another definition. To offend is to do injury, to do injury or wrong to, amen? To do injury or do wrong to, to commit offense against, to commit offense against. All right, I got one more. Well, no, I, I'll stop with that one. I'll stop with that to to commit offense against. Now, let me share something with you. I was I was married um, probably uh, eight about eight years ago, nine something like that, and um, I end up getting a divorce. Okay, you know, and at the time I didn't know that it was uh, it was imperative in my life because I still had some underlying things that was going on with me. I was a Christian. I was striving. I was walking um, in, the, in, in the pastorate. Um, I was still learning. I was growing. But um, for whatever the reason was, man, it was just hard. It just seemed like it was real hard. And I just couldn't seem to get certain things in my life under control okay so you know all i saw was what was wrong with my wife what the deal was with her um and i guess she saw what was wrong with me and what the deal was with me so i just got to the point man where i had enough and i said god i can't deal with this no more this person it just seemed like we're not clicking together. I'm walking towards you. She's going in the opposite direction. And it just wasn't clicking. It just seemed like every time there was something going on. And I was getting offended. I was offended. What I was saying to her was offensive to her. Because I'm using the word. And she's constantly going the other way. So let me just share. You know, I was offended. And so it just got to the point to where it, was, it wasn't working and we, we divorced. So, here's, the, here's where the tricky part is, people. You, you're offended by things people say and do. And there were some things that she did. And I'm not going to really go into what it was. But there were some things that she did to me. That, and it really, really woke me up. It really, really sent me to... Sit down and talk with God. You know, because I was praying one day, and I praise God for this. God is awesome. I was praying one day, and I said, God, yeah, I'm divorced now. Man, you know, how long is it going to take me? I'm going to get me a fresh little cutie. I'm going to get me a fresh wife. Yeah, this is going to be cool. And uh, God said, no. Nah. No, nah, you need at least five years. This is what the Holy Spirit told me. And I'm like, five years? He said, yeah, you need at least five years. And um, I was like, five years? He said, you need at least five years. The Holy Spirit told me, you need at least five years to get yourself together. I didn't know I was that hurt. I didn't know I was that offended and that wounded. Man, I was wounded. But watch this. So five years, I went on, prayed, kept praying. And each year, God showed me just how 
I was wounded and how I was offended and how I was hurt in my relationships, not only with my wife, but he showed me people that was before my wife that I had been offended by and had been wounded by. And I'm like, man, Holy Spirit, you mean to tell me I'm carrying this around? And he told me you're carrying around hurts and wounds that you haven't let me get my hands on yet. He said, that's why you need five years. So you know what I did? I got on my face and I just opened myself up. I just gave God the room to move in me, to touch those places that other people had wounded, other people had, had hurt, other people had, a, had left offenses. I, I just let them touch it and I laid out day in and day out and I prayed to God for help and I prayed for strength and do you know it took God those five years to heal me people if you have a fence in your life if you know somebody hurt you if you know somebody said something to you or did something to you that was unjust give it to God God is the healer Jesus is the one that can heal you. He knows. He understands. I'm not saying that your situation may be like mine. I'm sharing this with you so that maybe, just maybe, you may be able to see something or take a scripture or, or take some time because that's really all I'm sharing with you today is to just take some time dealing with yourself because a lot of times, you're going to find out that you were just as much as the problem of the other person was, that the other person was. You. So, to say that, what I'm saying is I was just as much of a problem than my ex was. So, God started dealing with my hurts and pains, and man, he started cleaning me out had old relationships. He said, you got to get rid of this one and you got to get rid of that one. I didn't even know they were still hanging around, people. But in your heart, your heart is like a big sponge. <laughs> and it just holds those things that happen to you and they, it's like they just are compartmentalized to where they're in a compartment and they're in a safe and, and these are places we keeping that stuff built up. And we won't let God touch it. Come on. Amen. Come on. Talk to me. We won't let God touch it. It's some areas down in there. Help me Holy Spirit. It's some areas down in there. That you got to let God touch. You're not going to get over it. You, you, me, oh my God. This thing was so. So powerful to me. After five year point. I was like, God, it's been five years, man. He, I, but he took me back to four or five relationships even before I got married. And he cleaned all of that old stuff out of my heart. Come on, people. Come on. He cleaned all of that old stuff out. He, he, <laughs> powerful, powerful. He cleaned those old relationships that meant nothing. They weren't good relationships. But God had to get that stuff out of my heart before I could really truly love him the way he wanted me to love him. Because, people, listen to me. Give it to God. If somebody said something years ago, if it was your mom, if it was your dad, if it was your uncle, if it was auntie, if it was a husband, a wife, if it was a pastor or, or what, whoever, listen to me. Get before God in prayer, in prayer, and God will begin to show you exactly how to get yourself in a position to where he can clean you out. Sometimes it takes years, people. 
Sometimes it takes years. It's things going on right now that's leaving offenses in people. That's leaving offenses. Deep, wounded cuts. That's offending people. But this is why God chose this message at this time. Because it's God that can truly free you from all of that stuff. Let me finish with the story. So we 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 split. God work on me five years. I'm like, man, I feel good. I feel weights are lifted off. I feel good. I'm seeing straight. So at the at the, at the five year point, I'm like, man, I'm ready. Let me get somebody. And the Lord said, no. The Lord says no. The Holy Spirit said, no, I'm not done. I, said, I thought you said five years. I even read in the book. I was reading the book on marriage and how to get through it and how to let things go. And my mouth forgot what the guy's name was. And the, the man said, you need at least five years in his book. And I'm like, man. And so it's about the fifth year. I'm rolling out of it, going into the sixth, and God said, no, no relationships. You need about three or four more. And so I, I, kinda, I, I was like, I couldn't understand it. But as God began to deal with me, and he began to show me in his word that sometimes it takes offenses to, to, to get to understand things. I want you to go over the Go over to Matthew chapter 18. Watch what it says here. And, and it's, it's just funny. Sometimes it just, it, 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 it takes us to be offended sometimes to look at ourselves. Let's go to Matthew chapter 18 verse 6. And, it's, and this is Jesus talking about the little children. And he says, but Whoso, whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hang about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses. Listen to this. Woe to the world because of offenses. The world. For it must need be that offenses come. But woe to the man by whom the offenses come. Offenses have to come. We have to be offended to grow sometimes. To change. To bring change in our lives. And I saw at this time through this scripture. That what I had gone through. The hurts. The pain. The misunderstandings the dislikes, the things that was going on in my marriage, that had to happen for me to see where I made my mistakes because the first five years, it was all about what she did, but it wasn't about what she did because God started to show me after the fifth year what was wrong with me, what I did, how I did it, how I messed things up. Amen? So let me finish reading. Eight, wherefore, if your hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It, it is better for thee to enter into, into life heart or main, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. See, offenses, so we can either be the offender or the offendee. You see, and so I want you to understand that it, is, it, it gets crazy sometimes when we're looking at our lives and we're trying to understand why things are happening. It happens at work. It happens in church. It happens in our family. People say things. A lot of times, man, this mouth, this mouth, man, it, 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 it let's go over to James chapter three real quick. Watch this, watch this, watch this in James chapter 3. 
Watch what it says about the tongue. James chapter 3. Amen. You, you there? James chapter 3. My brother, we started in verse 1. My brother, be not many masters, knowing that ye shall receive a greater condemnation. <clears throat> For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Woo! <laughs> Come on now, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me go back over this. It says, my brother, be not many masters, knowing that ye shall receive the greater condemnation. Amen. Watch this. I have a footnote here. It says, masters, teachers. The theme of ch chapter three, often regarded as the tongue, is more properly the teacher. The chapter progresses from the teacher to his primary tool, the tongue. Being the source of the teacher, his wisdom, Jesus must warn the many who were seeking to teach in the church since in the early church, it was an early matter to teach in the synagogue. But see, you got to remember, people were not disciplined. See, you need the Holy Spirit. You, you know, it's the Holy Spirit that tempers your tongue. But let me finish reading. Watch this. Two, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. If you ain't got no, if you don't offend with your tongue, you a perfect man. And see, most of the offenses come from things people said or things people done. Amen? Okay, let me keep reading. Three. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us and turn about their whole body. Behold also, and these are examples. Behold also, the ship which which though they be so great they are driven of fierce winds yet are they turned about with a very small helm whithersoever the governor listed where whoever the captain of the ship is it's a very small helm that's guiding that ship left or right or turn it around same way this tongue is our body is a big body but our tongue is the master of, of, of offenses. Five. Even the tongue is a little member and boasts of great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Listen to this, people. Listen to this. When I started studying this, I started seeing I, a, lot of, a lot of the things that I sold out to my wife came back to me. It came back to me. And I, I, I had to apologize to her and to myself. Amen? Because offenses. Come on now. Come on, talk to me. I want you to understand this. Offenses come a lot of times from things that we say. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you. Okay, watch this. Let's keep going. Six, and the tongue is a fire. Listen to this. A world of iniquity. <laughs> it's a world of wickedness. The tongue. Wow. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and it is set on the fire of hell. Man, the tongue mess up everything. <laughs> Once I got, when I got this revelation, that's when I start. I saw it was more things wrong with me than it was with the person that was offending me. Oh, come on, people, come on, talk to me now. Come on, watch this. 
verse 7. For every kind of beast of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind. Man, that is powerful. <laughs> wow. Watch 8. But the tongue can no man tame. Come on, man. Come on. Where the offenses come? It said at the beginning of the chapter. From our mouths. From inside. <sighs> Ooh, God help me. I got to die for a drink of coffee. From inside us. We're, the, we're offenders. If you got some offenses, get on your face before God. Let God show you. The person is not going to come. He's not going to come back to you and say, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I said this. No. God ain't going to sit down and talk to you about what they said and what they did. God want to talk about what you did. Woo yes, sir. Yes, sir. God want to talk about what you did. Amen? Okay, let's keep reading. We only got a couple more scriptures. It says, For every bird, beast, bird, serpents, things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. People, Amen. I, this may not be funny to you. It's funny to me because I went through it. Your mouth will bring offense to people because it's not tamed. Because it's not tamed. This little member that helps us to taste, to helps us to shuttle the food down into our throat and, and where it can stomach and digest. It's a big member, man. Verse 9. Verse, I got to read 8 again. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. It's talking about what it can do. It can bless and it can curse. Woo! People. God is showing you he can touch those offenses. He can touch those wounds and those hurts that other people have wounded you with. He can show you the part you played in it and can, and can bring you to the point to where your tongue can be tamed. Your tongue can have A bridle to where the Holy Spirit can pull that bridle and tell you when to stop, when not to say that, when not to share that, when not to get angry, when not to get frustrated. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is a bridle. And the only way I was able to get over mine was he pointed out to me that I had a problem with my tongue. Let me finish reading this and then we'll go on with the story. I just wanted to share this. I hope this is helping somebody. If you're wounded, get before God. I laid out many a days and it was some days I cried. It was some days I saw inside my heart and I saw things that was not right. And I saw things that I needed to get it together. I saw it. 
You know, and so when you're talking about eight years, it's been eight years for me. Nine, almost going on nine. And now I don't even, I, you know, I'm like, wow, I, God, thanks for showing me that. I don't, I, I, now I don't even want to get married. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you, man, I still look down in my heart. Hey, I look down in there and be like, there's still some stuff down in there. God, we got to work on. But it's the truth. L lie not to yourself. Look at yourself. It's no sense in hooking up with somebody and then all that stuff coming out. Let it come out now. Let God reach his hand down in there through the Holy Spirit and pull that stuff out now that's no good. Some of us, is leaders that's hurt. It's leaders. Leading congregations. They hurt. They wounded. But God is dealing with them. We all have to stop and we all have to let God do what he wants with us. We're not our own. Man, let, let, me, let me keep going. Let me, I don't want, okay. But the tongue in 8, verse 8, James 3, 8, but the tongue can no man tame is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Man! Nine, there with bless we God even the Father and therewith curse we men which are made after the similitude of God man <laughs> Woo, James was cutting wasn't he James is cutting he's cutting God want us to love our brothers and sisters what did he tell us to love each other he, wouldn't, he didn't care about what was happening. Love. Love thy neighbor as thyself. <laughs> May. See? Whew. Let it go. You can't, I, man, let it go. It's a lot of you out there. It ain't no sense in, in you know, to my, yeah, I don't know what Pastor Bird, you know, he got, think he got a prophetic gift or something like that. No, I'm just doing what the Holy Spirit told me to do. If you are offended, let it go. Get some deliverance. Go get before God. Start praying, asking God to take it away from you. It's not necessary even to go back to the person. The longer you hold on to those offenses and those hurts and those wounds, the deeper they go and they keep growing roots and they want to stay there. And guess what? After over time, over time, it can the enemy want to, ooh, God, whoa, thank you, Holy Spirit. The enemy want to come at you and want you to start to hate them, to hate the issue, to hate what happened. And now it just gets deeper and more ugly and and more prevalent, and it goes from dislike to hate. That's all. God wants you to cut it off at the root so that it can't come back, so that it can't keep digging into you. You have to let those things go because you think you're growing. God told me in, in, in my six, seven years, he said you had to let that stuff go because you could not go on as a pastor and be able to bless others because you couldn't even get past the things you were dealing with. Whoa, people. <laughs> Whoa. Offenses. They shall come. Let me finish reading. 10. Out of the mouth proceeded blessing and cursing, my brother. These things ought not so to be. Does a fountain have, does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? James is cutting. He's cutting. Can a fig tree, my brother, bear olive berries, either the vine figs, so can no fountain both yield 
water and salt water and fresh. Man, you know what? I got to read verse 13. Let me read verse 13. I, I wasn't going to read this, but I got to. Watch what he's saying in verse 13. Whoso is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you, let him show out of a good conversation his work with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. I'm going to stop right there. I, I'm not going to even go down. You know. I ain't going to even go down. I, I, I'm, I, you know. I, 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 woo! I, I say that for next time. But let me finish. I want you to understand. Six, seven years. And God just began to tell me, I don't want you to have anybody. Not right now at this time. I'm not done with you. And I begin to look at myself, people. And I'm telling you, I'm using this. And I'm hoping that it opens you up to deal with your hurts and pains. It doesn't matter who it is. You don't have to leave the church because somebody said this to you. You don't have to do that. Because let me tell you something. Offenses is something that you allow to happen to you. You allow it to happen to you. Offenses come from you allowing it to happen. Not from um, somebody just wanting to hurt you or wound you. It's because you allow it. You have to be ready to forgive. You have to be ready to overlook. Amen. And so. The Lord dealt with me. And he showed me that. You know. I, I, had, I had some more years. I needed a little more time. And then he showed me. Where I played. A big part in what was wrong that I was offended and I allowed those hurts and pains to come in I allowed it by not dealing with the, with with the, the sin the offenses that was in my life and that's what awakened me to how bad offenses are and then and that's when I started to control my tongue and be very careful what I say to people, man. Sometimes it's better not to say anything before you open up your mouth and say something to people. Especially if it's not in a loving, peaceful manner. You know, so... Once I started to really accept that God was dealing with me and was, and was bringing to fruition that I was an offender and I dished it out, then he showed me that when you dish out offenses, they're going to come back to you. That's just how it works. You reap what you sow. You sow offense, you're going to reap it. And if you hurt, and I'm rounding this off, if you hurt, if you wounded, if, 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 get before God. Get in a room. Go in a room and pray. Make sure you got time. Lay out on the floor. Lay a blanket down. Get a pillow. And you cry out before God. You got to cry out. You got to ask God. God, help me. What is the problem? Why am I so offended? Why, why, why do I offend people? 
and you let him show you. You let the Holy Spirit work on you because he's the one that can show you how not to duplicate what people has done to you, what they have done. So let me say this. Let me pray. Father God, I really hope that this message, I really hope it bless somebody. And 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 and, and I'm, I'm gonna say, my email address is Adrian, all lowercase Adrian Bird, sixty four at gmail dot com. If, if if this message blessed you, just email me and give me a message. If you need some additional help, email me and ask me for some help, and I'll share with you just the knowledge that I know. I'm not saying my knowledge is the only way and what God showed me is the only way, but I know that is one way. But God help your, your sons and your daughters to not walk in offense. Some people, it's just harder to let some offenses go, God. And if some people it's easy, some people it's not. But God, have your way. Father God, help. Help heal those wounds and those hurts that have happened uh, from church members or from church officials or from pastors or apostles or leaders or some from sisters and brothers and family or whatever, whatever it is, God, at work or whatever it is, Father God, bless your people this morning that they can open themselves up and let you in. Let the Holy Spirit do his job in you. It's his job to cut that stuff off of you, to cut it away from your heart, to cut off those things that are no good. Father God, do it in Jesus' name. God, I pray. I pray. I pray for you out there in, in our audience today. If you, if you need some help, our church will be open. Our church will be open, open soon. Come on out. Seek the Lord. Seek him. Come on out and visit us. And just be real. If you really want to get rid of something, you got to come out. You have to get help sometimes. Father God, help our brothers and sisters as we pray, as we conclude this message. Help us to understand that offenses must come, but they must go as well. And you are the ultimate healer, God. You know what a person needs because ultimately, God, you will exchange those hurts and wounds with love, with forgiveness, with patience. So, God, have your way. As I end this message today, Lord God, bless your people. In Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you. Amen. Hey, Andrea. Okay, I just ended, but my it says on my computer, if you end this live video now, you will be able to choose if you want to save it or delete it. What do I hit? It's got cancel and end. But it don't it don't say save. It's